Democrat says Trump told him about an infamous phone call he made to the leader of Ukraine. He wanted President Zelensky to investigate the foreign business dealings of Joe Biden's son, Hunter, in the hope of causing harm to his political rival. Trump's boast was that he could and should have been much tougher. Yeah, and Trump said, uh, you know, that Ukraine phone call, that was nothing compared to what I usually do. And he said, that Ukraine phone call, that's nothing compared to what we usually talk about. Hi again, everyone. It's now five o'clock in New York. Secret recordings just made public reveal shocking private conversations that took place between the ex-president and Australian billionaire Anthony Pratt. We'll remind you a little bit about who Pratt is. Pratt began cozying up to Trump following the 2016 election. That's according to new reporting in today's New York Times. He became a paying member of Mar-a-Lago and used his money to get Trump's attention. It worked. The Times reporting, along with the private tapes obtained by 60 Minutes of Australia, a snippet of which you just heard there, provide a much fuller picture of what President Trump was like behind the scenes. As the Times puts it, quote, new details of how an American president and an Australian billionaire bonded over their mutual self-interest helped to document the transactional ethos of the Trump presidency and show how Trump melted his White House with his personal business in a way that, according to prosecutors, had ramifications for national security, which gets to the why do we care about this guy on the audio tapes at this point, Anthony Pratt. So Anthony Pratt is right now today of interest to us because he's of interest to special counsel Jack Smith. According to reporting from earlier this month, Pratt was interviewed by federal prosecutors and FBI agents at least twice this year in Smith's investigation into Trump's hoarding of classified documents. It was reported that, quote, months after leaving the White House, Trump allegedly discussed potentially sensitive information about U.S. nuclear submarines with Pratt who went on to share that information about U.S. nuclear submarines with, quote, 45 others, including six journalists, 11 of his company's employees, 10 Australian officials, three Australian prime ministers, and a partridge in a pear tree. Now, we don't know if Pratt was forthcoming with prosecutors in the same way he was on those tape recordings, but the recordings certainly reveal and depict former leader woefully unconcerned about any aspect of U.S. national security and protecting America's secrets. More from that Times report today, quote, the private comments captured while Trump was still president provide a rare glimpse into how a businessman on the other side of Trump's transactions actually viewed the New York real estate developer's tactics with a mix of blunt acknowledgement and admiration for someone so willing to test the boundaries of the American presidency. Trump denies the Trump the Times reporting, calling it, wait for it, fake news. He even calls Pratt a, quote, red-haired weirdo, end quote. Representatives for Pratt didn't respond to several requests for comment. That is where we start the hour with some of our most favorite experts and friends, former acting assistant attorney general for national security at the U.S. Department of Justice, Mary McCord is here. Plus, our friend Andrew Weissman is back with us, also a former top official with the Justice Department and former FBI counterintelligence agent Pete Strzok is here. Pete Strzok, I start with you because I believe the title of your book gets just at this, a president who is compromised by, to be totally blunt, his business failures, his desperate need for money, and his complete lack of regard for U.S. national security. What do you make of this new reporting? Well, Nicole, I think as you look at what Jack Smith appears to be pursuing, he's exploring all the different ways and reasons that Donald Trump may have kept classified information. Now, the interesting thing is those are exactly the ways that a hostile foreign intelligence service would seek to elicit classified information from him. So whether he's, you know, trying to, uh, you know, denigrate Mark Milley by presenting classified information about an Iran war plan, whether he's trying to get additional donations from a, an Australian cardboard box man, manufacturer, whether he's posing with selfies with any number of scantily clad women around Mar-a-Lago, it is clear that one of the ways he is using this classified information that he kept or used that information is to, you know, make somebody look bad, is to impress somebody. But guess what? Every intelligence service in the world, including the CIA here at home, but overseas in Russia and China, are well aware of using these exact motivations to extract classified information, to extract national defense information from people. That is their job. That's their profession. And they have millions and millions of dollars to do it. And so what we're seeing is 
evidence that when it comes to Trump, these techniques work. And what I worry about is not so much what he told some Australian businessman, although it concerns me hugely and is just devastating if he's talking about the capabilities of our nuclear submarines. If he is doing that to a or, or sharing that with an Australian businessman who's willing to describe that to Jack Smith, what on earth has he told somebody who's acting as an agent of the government of Russia, of the government of China? somebody who has got in close to him and gotten the same sort of information. It is absolutely devastating from the perspective of what Trump was not doing to protect our national security. And I think we're seeing Jack Smith just, you know, articulate and explore all the different reasons why Trump kept this information. Yeah, and I mean, I, Andrew Weissman, an asset or an agent of Russia seems mysterious, but Mike Flynn is still in Trump's inner circle. He's very closely aligned with with. with Russia and Russians. I mean, this is to me a sort of a pattern and practice reveal, right? There was a pattern and practice of revealing state secrets to people he was trying to hustle for business. And I wonder what your current uh, concerns are about what happened to the most sensitive information the government possesses. Well, I definitely was thinking of you, Nicole, when I was reading this story, because you have said repeatedly that with Donald Trump, there's nothing new. It's the same story. Um, it is um, authoritarianism and embracing authoritarianism. I mean, being proud of it, boastful of it, even if it's it's not true that he's even tougher on calls than he was with Zelensky. The fact that he thinks that's an appropriate thing to say, because the call itself was horrendous. Uh, the idea that if it was true or even not true, that it just reveals those authoritarian tendencies. Uh, Pete is exactly right that the DNI investigation into the spill at Mar-a-Lago is exactly what you are worried about, about the country's um, safety and security. It is what people like Mary and Pete spent their careers worrying about. Um, to keep this country safe. And we've talked about how it's really unfathomable that somebody could be the president of the United States and not understand that. And then the final thought I had was this idea that everybody's taping everything is just remarkable to me that, um, you know, when you're in the world of people talking to or with or about Donald Trump, people feel like they need to tape it because everyone's willing to lie about what happened. There's, there's just seems to be no honor among thieves and everyone's recording everything, which is why you sort of have the Brad Raffensperger tape in the Secretary of State of Georgia mm -hmm. is because he thought, you know what, I'm going to need that. Right. Um, and so here, I think the reason you're seeing this proliferation is because um, it's not like a normal presidency. You're not dealing with people who have any concern about the truth. Yeah, and I mean, Mary, again, this is in the news in part because it's of interest to Jack Smith. Jack Smith has reportedly spoken to Mr. Pratt. Why is Jack Smith, what specifically would Jack Smith need or do with Mr. Pratt? Well, you know, the Mar-a-Lago case uh, is still pending case. There's a trial date in May. This case involves uh, allegations that Mr. Trump and others mishandled classified uh, documents. And then he tried to conceal his mishandling of those documents by using his own employees at Mar-a-Lago. And part of, you know, this mishandling charge will, will be, the case will be stronger if it shows how careless Mr. Trump was with national security information. So whether it is actually charged conduct, for example, telling uh, Mr. Pratt some of our nation's secrets, things that are highly classified, whether it's about nuclear submarines or about uh, our strike on Qasem Soleimani, the head of the uh, Iranian Quds Force, they're, they're you know, uh, basically their terrorist wing. These are things that uh, high likelihood, these were highly classified, and his willingness to just tell people, really for his own transactional sort of business personal interests about them, I think goes will likely be admissible to show Mr. Trump's intent, his um, knowledge, his the absence of any mistake, because, you know, sometimes he has said that 
he doesn't even know what was at Mar-a-Lago. It must have been uh, mistakenly, you know, brought there in the hustle and bustle of clearing out the White House. Other times, of course, he has said the exact opposite and said he declassified everything. But, you know, it will be Jack Smith's burden to prove uh, the intentional or the knowing, at least, mishandling of that classified information. So Mr. Smith is probably assessing whether he wants to call witnesses like Mr. Pratt in trial against Mr. Trump.